Hello everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. In this episode, we're gonna focus on these lights. I'm sure anybody who owns a Tamiya is very, very well aware of these auxiliary lamps. They are a two-piece unit. You get your top part and your bottom part, and they glue together, and then you put a screw in, and uh, all is happy with the world. If you're like me, you've painted 10,000 of these, and they get really old really quick. Basically, you have to assemble them, and then, before you're burnt out, you have to put some filler on here, let it dry, sand it down so that that seam is no longer there. At which point, then you have to primer the entire thing, let the primer dry, then go back, mask off the front half, paint the back of it black, mask off the back half, paint the front of it white, put your sticker on, if you're like me, clear coat it, then put it on the car. Here's the problem with that. First off, I am tired of it. And anybody who's watched my channel is well aware that I have between 10 and 12 million Hornets. And as you can see, we've got four alone on this vehicle here. There's a couple of irritations I have with these lights. Number one, having to get rid of this little seam in the middle. Number two, having to mask these off because they always, always, always want to bleed in this area here. So it's not easy to do. Plus on the rear side, you've got this seam. So usually I end up painting these a matte color because it hides that. The last problem I always have is the, the whatever you want to put here, the KC or the Hella or the, the newer bright light style from Tamiya. The issue that I have with putting those stickers on is as you can see on this particular Hornet, we have four of these lights, but these and these are simply not interchangeable. In fact, on the, on the car itself, these and these are not interchangeable because depending on how you want the decal oriented, you have to rotate the light. So you have to first put them on, then get these uh, decals properly placed, then take them back off if you want to clear coat them, then put them back on. And if you change your mind later and go, you know what, this color scheme doesn't work too well. I want to put these on my grasshopper. Well, you can't do that because your grasshopper has these oriented vertically and not at an angle. Anyway, all of these problems began to very much annoy me. This is why I have developed all these. What you are looking at are two 3D printed parts from Shapeways. We are seeing many more than two. Now this comes in one set. In fact, originally it was attached like this. So this is one sprue. And these eight all come on a post. So you snap the post off and you can lay all these out and paint them. This one here, um, it was much cheaper to have them simply all on a post because of the volume they took up and the space they took up. So, uh, and you've got a uh, image up here right now of what these looked like originally. I didn't do any kind of prep to these. These were not sanded. These were just painted. And then in the case of these, matte clear coated. And in the case of these, clear coated. The reason why these are on these little posts is so that you can very reasonably get these painted without any kind of overspray. And then when you cut these off, they're gonna cut off very cleanly, okay? And you do wanna make sure that this back surface that you're cutting off is trimmed smooth because that could affect the fitment and I'm cutting off the wrong side. This could affect the fitment when you put it onto the, to the rear housing. Now, although I chose to have all these parts printed in white, you are more than uh, able to have these printed in black. The reason I didn't do that is because the black is not capable to be polished at this time at Shapeways and therefore you're going to get a significantly rougher appearance. However, if this is just going to be for a basher or you do want to do a little bit of light sanding, maybe that's that's going to be okay with you. I painted some of these yellow, I painted some of these white, I put different stickers on them. Some of these are black, some of these are charcoal, but it really doesn't matter how I mount these because there is no key. I can mount these oriented like this. I can orient them like this. I can orient them vertically. I can do whatever I want. And as soon as I put the screw in the back, it holds it in whatever orientation that you want. These were not designed because the other ones were not pretty. They weren't designed because the other ones were not durable. These were designed simply because I was getting annoyed with how I had to prep these every single time. And as you can see here, no matter how quickly you paint these, you're going to get a perfect seam every single time. And you can toss these on whatever car that you want. In terms of assembly, I'm gonna grab one of these black housings here. This is a 12 millimeter long Tamiya self-tapping screw. The most common one available from Tamiya. We're gonna set this on here and thread it on in. 
and basically if I loosen it up slightly more there you go I think that's about right obviously I probably have this installed in the car at this point here we're just gonna thread this sucker in okay and when it stops it stops there we go I uh, could have made this thing sit inward slightly. However, these 12 millimeter long screws come with everything to me related. The eight millimeter ones seem to be like hen's teeth. So it's simply simpler to use these longer screws. These lights are designed purely for simplicity because I am just completely tired of having to deal with these. So thankfully I don't have any more that I have to paint. From now on, it is these suckers. On the base, same kind of deal. We can just get that screw started and thread that sucker all the way in. These here are not designed to be drilled out. They are designed to bite the way they are. However, these are 3D printed, so it might be in your best interest to clean them out. I'm using a 1.5, this is a, excuse me, a two millimeter bit just to clean out these holes. You must do this just to make sure that no, there's no residual 3D print powder in here. Uh, failure to do so will potentially damage the threads or split the case. So just make sure they're all cleaned out. I do want to mention that once again, in order to make sure that these screws will fit, these are designed to go all the way in. This hole here at the bottom is in fact a through hole. I don't know how well you can see that here. So it is possible that you will need to use one or two washers on the inside of the head just to make sure we don't crash into this screw here. That's not really going to hurt anything, but it will prevent this from locking down and maybe have the light rotate. And again, I didn't want to make this longer because that would have altered the form factor of the original one. So I felt that once again, using these more common screws, it was simpler for everybody just to throw a couple of washers on there and be done with it in the event that you needed uh, such a uh, a washer. This will be the case with the Hornet or the Frog Body that use the Lexan material and not the case with the cars like the Grasshopper or the Fast Attack Vehicle or the Super Champ. I went ahead and threw those lights on the front of my frog because I've been meaning to put them on the front of my frog. I know what you're thinking, the frog is supposed to have the auxiliary lights up here, but this is my frog and my frog prefers to have them here. I'm actually really excited about adding a couple more of these Ampro foam bumpers to my other cars. One of the reasons why I hadn't done that is because I was simply out of these, these lamps and I didn't want to paint anymore because they're such a nightmare. I didn't want to buy any more of the sprues because then they come with the drivers and so on and so forth. And now, fortunately, I don't have to deal with that. Well, this was a very simple product, a very simple installation, and I hope it does save you quite a lot of time when you are installing your auxiliary lights. Thank you very much for watching. I've got a number of upgrades coming very soon, including a complete interior for the F-150 body, as well as the return of Project Bandit. It's been painted, and right now I'm doing uh, quite a lot of body work, and that will all be in an upcoming video. I also have something I'm very excited about. Here is a prototype for the Blackfoot motor plate. It turns out that almost all the plates on my ORV cars show either some signs of cracks or are in incredibly poor shape. So this guy is coming up very soon. Please like this video if you liked it and go ahead and add a comment if you have any questions. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram at Ampro Engineering on both. And before you take off, please check out the link to my Shapeways page in the description and take a look at the band Blue Pinto. They are the folks that allow me to use their songs in my video and a link to their page is in the end credits as well as in the description. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.